Hello, my great and wonderful people. We welcome you once again to our to this episode of this program. Now we, the Nation Voice, the voice when they reveal the secret things when they said the government and the politician that they said they cover. And today we get this video for our table when they say one quickly review to Una, still on the struggle for Africa to liberate themselves from the hands of China and every other Western world, most especially Nigeria. And uh, before we go properly to the details of this video, so if case today not the first time when we say they hear about us on the channel, be this, we say you are highly welcome. I bet do us a favor. You see that subscribe button, press some. And the small bell when they nearer, press some as well so that anytime we they upload a video again, you know what they suffer to look for. Them. It will only come to you like a message. Our prayer always be said. They say we want to be said to the supporters of the channel. Now they say we want God with the same people when we support you for everything when the good when you put your hands to do in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I beg make you not forget. After you don't watch this video finish, make you not forget to help us share and so that it will still reach our brothers and sisters all over the world. As you do so, God Almighty will bless you. Just enjoy this video. For another wonderful and beautiful day, although a day that has come in with a very serious shock and news of the death and burial of the former chief of staff to Mr. President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And so I do know that um, the entire presidency and, and, and some appointees are seriously in the morning period. I am prepared to actually go out and continue what I am always doing, I'm talking with the government, especially on the issue of the Africans and Nigerians that are actually going through a whole lot. And with me is the press statement actually signed by the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy on the 4th of April, 20. 20. But I will want to give them this opportunity, like I said, you may even be surprised with the kind of country that we have found ourselves. <laughs> People may just be lobbying right now for that seat that is vacant because of COVID-19 and all that. And I want to say that this is why we had to make everybody understand that this thing is a necessary evil that must come or a necessary end that must come to all kinds of people. No matter how much you amass, no matter how much wealth, no matter the influence, no matter the power, no matter the, the, the connection, we should always remember that we are flesh and blood. Whatever we do now is exactly what will speak to us or speak for us when we exit this natural world. Death is a mystery that the human mind cannot comprehend. And that is what a lot of people say has no solution. That's exactly why I truly, truly want to say this i'm supposed to be on my way out right now for the continuation of my protest against china and the way they are treating africans and nigeria and i actually said yesterday that they should come up with a workable plan of extraction of africans and nigerians from from china but with what has happened right now, I know that there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of mourning going on in the villa at this particular moment, and the Federal Executive Council, I'm human, I've got flesh in me, I have conscience myself, everybody will be thrown off balance. But is there a lesson to be learned from what has happened? Yes, when you are a leader, and the people you are leading are not wishing you well because you are not treating them well. 
you should begin to think about yourself. If the nation is supposed to be completely thrown into a mourning period, but let us be honest, like I have always been honest to you, the truth still remains. That is not everybody that is mourning. If you hear comments and you read even the, the social media, you will re realize that you are still alive. You have an opportunity to make a change. You have an opportunity to repent. You have an opportunity to actually begin to look at the people you are leading so that they don't wish you evil. This is another time you see Nigerians thrown into jubilation that somebody who is at the top, at the hands of affairs, passed on and there is no mourning, there is no tears. Rather, people are saying they are expecting more to happen. That is because of the way you are leading. You lead as if there is not going to be an end. You lead as if you are going to live forever. You lead as if you have all the powers even over death. I think this is a lesson. I, on my own part, I will not go put pressure on you on a day like this, but let us think about what we are doing to the common people. The cry of the poor, the cry of the fatherless, the cry of the widows will never go on head by the Almighty. And I said to you a couple of weeks ago that the blood of the innocent people is going to be demanded from your hand because you have the opportunity of changing their lives. You have the opportunity of transforming their lives and you just refuse to do anything. All you want is amass wealth here and there. All you want is to bank money here and there. Now he is gone. How much money went with him? How much influence went with him? And I am telling you, give two another three days, they will forget him. All the people that run after, even his family, they will now see what life is all about. The phone that rings all the time, the families that raises their shoulder high, they will now see the true nature of mankind. You who is still alive, you should give thanks to God and begin to amend your ways. When the righteous is on the throne, the people rejoice. But when the wicked is on the throne, the people will mourn. We live in Africa as if we control life itself. We live in Africa and treat our own subjects as if we control life itself and all of that. No, that is not the truth. The truth is that you need to know exactly what your people need and you give it to them. I will allow today to be, and I will allow them to mourn their lost. But the dead has buried the dead already. And we are not out of the COVID-19. Today we woke up to hear that Vladimir Putin of Russia has agreed with the President of the United States of America, President Trump, that the World Health Organization should be dissolved. Because the World Health Organization are also not sincere with what they are doing. They are in tandem with, with, with Bill Gates, with China, to cause this grave, serious COVID-19 that we are going through. And Bill Gates wants to sell the vaccines by all means. A great, great grandson of those who want the depopulation of the world by abortion, by contraceptive, by wars, by genocide. They publish books and wrote books and Bill Gates is a descendant of those wicked ancestors who is not a doctor but yet has monopolized vaccines in the world today. And with the new revelation that the World Health Organization is in tandem and connivance and collaboration and conspiracy with China, with Bill Gates, 
and now the U.S. have withdrawn. Bill Gates has put in more money into into the World Health Organization. China has put in more money into the World Health Organization. I will say that the world is in agreement with the United States President and Putin, who is putting his support with that of the United States of America, that the World Health Organization be dissolved. Why will the World Health Organization say that very soon Africa is going to become the epicenter of COVID-19? This is terrible. That is the reason why we're talking to you African leaders and Nigerian leaders. When you see people try to donate things to you by all means, now the, the nation has the, the, the nation has 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 been been forced and pressured. To collect gifts by all means. Collect gifts by... You see, when somebody is putting pressure on you that you should take something, you should be suspicious of that. With all the doctors in, 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 in Nigeria, all the way, all the way from, from China and all of that, you, you, can, you can see that they are not able to help. The UNDP just just delivered something or some personal protective equipment and, and all of that to the United Nations here in Nigeria. Let us take time to find out where those equipments are coming from. Maybe China want to donate to us by all means. United Nations want to donate to us by all means. And they are projecting that Africa is going to become the epicenter of COVID-19 very, very soon. And they predicted, World Health Organization predicted that they see over 300,000 deaths caused by COVID-19 in the nearest future. And here we are. We want to relax the preventive measure. Yes, I agree that the preventive measure of stay at home and lockdown is, is bringing so much hardship. But we have enough money to take care of these people. The first money that was contributed by many for Nigerians, the Accountant General's office got burned and no explanation up till now. We did not see the impact of the money in the lives of Nigeria. Now, after the presidential speech on Monday, on Tuesday, the United Nations, through the European Union, gave Nigeria 21 billion naira in euros, 50 million euros. Now, instead of sitting down and planning how to arrange better palliatives for the masses, all of a sudden now, they want to relax the lockdown. Look, what has happened yesterday and today should teach you leaders a great lesson. When people pass away, people cry. People mourn them. People are thrown into sorrow. People don't rejoice when somebody passes away. It is only in our country, Nigeria, that our leaders will pass away and people will be celebrating. People will be throwing party and sharing gifts and thanking God. This is not good. Can't we learn? This was exactly what happened in the period of the tenure head of state and the self type president, um, 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 late General Sani Abacha. People went out on the streets and they began to celebrate when his death was announced everywhere. They were dancing and shouting on the policemen who went into the streets and tried to arrest people who are jubilating. Why will it always be in Nigeria? Is it not a shame to us? Is it not a shame to our government? Is it not a shame we don't learn lesson at all? Death is no respecter of persons. Death does not respect who you are. Death does not respect anybody. I hold in my paper the press statement, but I just want to keep that all on for today. Let us just watch what happened. But like I said, no matter what happens, people may be mourning. But I'm telling you now, Nigerians, for the Nigerian that I know, they may be lobbying right now who will take the vacant seat of the chief of staff instead of actually mourning.
No. I'm telling you, people are running helter-skelter looking for that particular seat. You see the kind of nation we are? Today you are in a seat. Tomorrow you will not be there. Today you may think that you have all the power, all the authority, all the strength, everything. But tomorrow you may not be there. Life is not in your hand. You watch the poor people. They die and you don't bother. You watch them. Hunger takes them and you don't bother. Mm. Now we are collecting too many things with all the doctors that came from China. Were they able to save him? They were not able to save him. And I am still warning, not now, not three days ago. I have warned a long time before now that we should accept nothing from the world, of, from the from the, from the country of China. I asked the United Nations and the World Health Organization to probe China. Am I not being vindicated today? Am I not being proven correctly today? I don't fall in the category of those who will get up and say they are making prophecies here and there because I know where I am coming from. Whatever I say carries a whole lot of weight because we all do not live the same life and we all are not called to occupy the same. The prophet, you must listen to me. You have no choice. Things are happening. Things are going on. And do not allow me to continue to be on the streets crying for the poor and talking for the voiceless of Nigeria. What has happened between yesterday and today should teach you leaders what a great lesson that you should pick because the truth is many of you don't learn. You get to that seat, you forget that the breath you have on your nostrils that flows through your respiratory system is not your own. Is controlled by a supreme being, a powerful being. What you should do now is to sit down and begin to think about your life. You are a son of man. As a leader, son of man, think of your life. What shall be the end of your life? If you were told in December that by today he will be no more, he will not agree. He will not. Let us look at it as a lesson. It is not something to be joyful about, but can you stop the people from jubilating? Because they feel that some of the people that are bringing much problem are being taken away. Leaders, are you not learning? Are you not learning? People who are mourning right now, I will tell you that 99.5% of them are pretending to mourn. They are not mourning from their heart. They are pretending. That is the truth. Because you are not leading directly. You are not leading well. Is this the dream of the founding fathers of Nigeria? The dream of the leadership we have today. Is this the same dream of the late Namde Azikwe? God bless his soul. The late Tafa Balewa, God bless his soul. The Sadalna of Sokoto, God bless his soul. Oh, our own very Papa of Bafemi Awolo. Is this their dream? Was this the dream of the foundation of the Nigeria that they actually, they actually suffered for? They handed power to you, descendants of theirs. They handed power to you in a platter of gold. Look at where we are, almost 60 years down the line. Ha! I think today should be a great lesson to all of you who are sitting in the power seat, who think that you have become the alpha and omega. You have become untouchable. You are now the I am that I am. Nobody can touch you. Death is no respecter of persons. If anybody had believed or said that today a man who will so much power will be driven in an ordinary bus, he will not have believed it. He may even have put such people into jail and imprisoned them. Whatever power you think you have today, think there is God. There is God in heaven. Think there is a supreme being. 
He gave you that power to make life better for the others. But I will die without properties. Nam de Azikwe Vese Memo, they died without properties. The Papa Lewa, they died without properties. Amon Velo, they died without properties. Here you are acquiring so many properties. How many properties have gone down to the grave with the former chief of staff now? How many? How many women went with him? How much money? Yes, you may be saying, no, this is not the time to talk about it. It is the best time to talk about it because it is fresh in the memory of everybody. After today, they will forget anything has happened and they will go back to their vomits and start treating the common people, start treating the less privileged, start treating the ordinary Nigerians anyhow, leading them the way they like. Yesterday, I wept and I cried over Africans and Nigerians that are suffering in, in China. And I told you that by 12 midnight, something should be done. Probably, this is the time for you to sit down and say, this man is talking to us. Let's do what is needful and save our own children from the hands of dehumanization and humiliation that they are going through. The voiceless have nobody to cry for them. The less privileged have nobody to fight for them. The common Nigerian have nobody to cry for them. Widows and old women are crying over their children in China and nobody is doing anything. Now look at what has happened. Look at, and I have to remind you, we know that there is life after death. We know that there is accountability. Now he will go and account, account to God for how he was able to lead his life when he was alive. Whether you like it or not, you may live a hundred years. You may live even a million years, but one day that life will come to an end. The little opportunity that God has given to you, make good use of it. At the little time you have, because all the time is not yours. I will take today and wait and allow the dead to mourn their dead. And allow the Nigerians to take a reflection of the moment of the day. All over the world, the news is everywhere. The news is everywhere. If the doctors and everything we are doing cannot keep him alive, then you should know that judgment is by the corner. God is watching. God is watching. God is watching. The poor old woman in the village sold everything she had to train her son or her daughter in the university, hoping that when they come out of school, they will wipe away their tears. These same children got out of school, they did their primary assignment, their NYSC, and they are out for many years, no job, because somebody wants to remain in one position for a very long time. And the old woman died without actually tying a wrapper from the proceeds of the children she has trained. It is only in Africa, Nigeria in particular, that this kind of thing happened. Oh, yes. Oh, in the days of our ancestors, in the days of our founding fathers, Namdia think we of blessed memory. Yes, Papa Wolowo of blessed memory. Satafa Balewa and Amadu Bello all of them, once you go to school, you have a bright future. Once you have education, you have a bright future. Now people just go to school for going to school. They go to school for nothing. Where's the money of their parents? Where's the money of their widowed mother? Where's the money of, of, of all those things they have put together to sell to see them through the university? Now universitarians, Polytechnicians and the academias we have raised, they are almost as nothing as those who did not go to school at all. Think about life. Think about life. Think about life. I will respect today. 
I will give them the opportunity to mourn their dead. But I will not let you rest until you do the right thing. Do the right thing. Because he, is, he, he did not know that the day he was going to be lowered into Mother Earth. You too, you don't know. When your own will happen. I want to ask you one question before I close this broadcast. Will people rejoice when you die? Or they will mourn when you die? Answer that question. God bless you. And I love you very much.